Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. One of the many reasons we pray is to always keep our spirit charged. There are men that their spirits are so charged that any signal that passes, they catch it. There are men whose spirits are so charged that if the devil plays around them, he's in trouble. You find so, so, somebody, he's going on the road and the devil attacks his car to have an accident. And then he said, Father, because this thing has happened here, nobody will have an accident here for 10 years. So <laughs> it's not everybody the devil tries. The devil strikes somebody with poverty. He breaks out of it and he said, anybody who is poor that comes across me must be wealthy. And on his account, 2 million people are already wealthy. Because the spirit is charged. If your spirit is not charged, you are defeated. And so prayer is not a religious activity. It's our means of plugging our spiritual battery to power. To charge up so that we can live life to the optimum. What you are doing now is good. But if God shows you what you should be doing, you may be disappointed. And so for you to function how God expects you to function is from a level of a charged spirit. You may be praying for deaf ears, they are opening, and God is saying now you should be raising the dead. And so if there is an opportunity to charge your spirit, keep charging it. There is just another level you are yet to enter. One thing that inspires me to pray is when I watch those at the gym. You come, they put, they wait for you, you struggle barely to lift that weight and they are telling you you are doing well and then you lift once you lift twice they want you to lift 20 they say lift five you lift five they say one more your hands are shaking they encourage you you lift it they keep pushing you until you almost almost think they are dying and the point comes you lift 20 they increase the weight there is never an optimal level for people who gym if you conquer one today they add another one tomorrow and so their business is just to keep conquering weights. No wonder they, when they eat. <laughs> when you find these people eat, you will run. The volume that they consume is a sign of what is happening to their cell system. <laughs> he leaves 100. They say one more. If you, they, they keep pushing them. And a point comes, the slim guy who went to the, went to the gym, the body becomes thick. After a while, the body begins to enlarge. And your friend that you used to hit on the chest and say, come on, relax. is now coming like this. It's the weight. It's the weight. That's how you pray. Gym your spirit until you can carry burdens for nations. And that's where I'm going to. Because the point will come when if you gym your spirit, God will now begin to depend on you to carry out his assignment. If you gym your spirit to a level, God will depend on you to carry the weight of a family. If you gym your spirit, God will depend on you to carry the weight of a nation and the point may even come god will depend on you to carry the weight of a continent and so what we are doing in the kingdom that we call impact is a function of the weight that our spirit can carry you know if we go to the gym today some of us will be able to carry 10 10, 10, 10 kg another will carry 100 kg another may carry 200 kg another will carry 5000 kg another will carry 10,000 kg if you are a person who should carry 10 kg and they give you 1000 kg when they are on force, it will suffer, it will strangle you or it will break your ribs. So God, even if he loves you, cannot give you a responsibility that is bigger than your weight. And so if you want to be relevant in the realm of God, you have to energize your spirit so that you build the capacity, not just to take families, but to take systems, to take territories and to take nations. This is why God uses prayer to train us. And so the first purpose of prayer is to build your spirit. Is to exercise your spirit is to charge your spirit everything physical exercise offers spiritual exercise also offers that's why paul made that comparison but he showed us that the greater benefit is in spiritual exercise the second purpose of prayer is to give you access to the proceeding word of god this is where men are stratified this is where men are categorized this is where men begin to enjoy ranking and spiritual advantage. See, don't envy anybody and don't pity yourself. Your condition can change if the word can come to you. See, when we are praying, we are waiting for the word. The secret of spiritual ranking and ascension 
is the quality of word that comes to you. A man can be in captivity until a word comes. It said he was in prison, but the Bible said in Psalm 107 from verse 17, it said until the time that his word came. So if the word does not come, he will remain in prison. You are permitted to remain in your condition until a word comes to you. That poverty will remain there until the word comes. That danger will remain there until the word comes. Joseph was in prison for 14 years. There was nothing that happened. He was living in purity. He had his giftings. He had wisdom, but the word had not come. The Bible said, until the time, verse 19, that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Instantly, he said, the king sent for to lose him. So your chains will not fall until your word comes. The fetters will remain there until your word comes. He said, the king sent for to lose him and to let him go free. And he didn't just free him because the word that came was not just freedom. It was exhortation. He said, the king sent for to lose him and he made him ruler of his people. He gave him the right to teach his senators wisdom. How can a prisoner become a teacher of senators? The word has come. If the word does not come, remain in that captivity. If the word did not come, remain in that debt. If the word does not come, remain in that health crisis. If the word does not come, remain in that attack. But if the word comes, the captivity loses authority over you. And so when you find men operating in authority, their word have come. If you jealous them, you can't stop them. Manipulate against them, you can't stop them. Gang up against them, you can't stop them. See, this is why when God leaves a man, nobody can bring him down. Nobody on earth. I make both to tell you, see, it's God that makes men. He said, let us make man in our own image. He can choose to make a man through another man. He can choose to make a man through an environment. But over and above that environment, it is God that makes men. Follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And one of the ways God makes men is to send his word. The man will come to you after the word has come. The money will come to you after the word has come. Because it's until the time that his word comes. And so when we are praying, we are searching for the words. We know the words are in the spirit, but we have not received them. This is why I tell people, prayer is not about time. There are more, see, how can you be doing an eternal business, calibrating it into time? Time is a body. What you are doing has its root in eternal past into eternal future. There is no amount of time that can envelop it. This is why even God gives us encounters and moments, Kairos moments, because he knows that time is not sufficient to envelop spiritual realities. And so in Kairos moments, there is a puncture in the spirit that brings that reality into your realm. And one of the things that makes those punctures accessible to your space is when you begin to pray. Your spirit must be activated in order to connect to it. And when it comes, it becomes your reality. Until the time that his word came. A prisoner is not actually a prisoner. Most of the people you call prisoners are prime ministers. The difference is the word. When the word comes, the status of a prisoner can change to a prime minister. What is that word? This is why we pray. See, when we are insisting on prayer, it's not to let people know that we pray. I tell people, forget this cock and bull nonsense. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm an intercessor. Relax. Every believer is an intercessor. You have not given yourself to it. That's why. Do you? Is it in this war of terror, of treachery, that you are waiting for somebody to pray for you? Pray for you? <laughs> if you call yourself that, thank God. But if you don't call yourself that, woe unto you. You are in trouble. Every one of us must have the designation of an intercessor. I tell people you will be an intercessor before you are a preacher. You will be an intercessor before you are a banker. You will be an intercessor before you are, you are a politician else you will be cut off nobody will catch the words of your destiny for you if they hear it is a confirmation how do you build faith and confidence it's even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says, i shall fear no evil for thou art with me who has that level of assurance that god is with him it's because of what god told him he said for thou art with me so the reason I walk through the valley of the shadow of death is not because I'm smart. It's because I know God has told me that he will be with me. When John showed up, why was he so bold? He was not afraid of the Pharisees. He was not afraid of being cast out of the synagogue. He was not afraid of being killed. Because he heard things. He said, the one that sent me, the same said unto me. He heard things. This is not zeal.
people catch words and so the second purpose of prayer is to catch words the bible says, carry with you words carry them carry them when you are going into a nation carry a word when you are going into business carry a word but those words are not a gift they are caught and the way your spirit is activated to catch them is through prayer too many are not praying the other time myself and pastor sonny we were going from adamawa in adamawa to the boundary somewhere around mubi it was like 40 minutes to cameroon in the night sometimes we are in meduguri medugu oh, are you crazy even after i got wedded after marriage three days after wedding i carried my wife to meduguri you don't take that it will be stupidity but i heard something jesus told me say because i leave you will see tomorrow i have heard something so i go to places where people fast to go i stroll there casually there was a time when i was traveling with pastor victor we were going to taraba state between zakibian and wokari there was crisis between Tiv and joko benway links will stop at the boundary you wait for a full animal who is crossing to carry you because you can be cut off a a, jukum, a, a, a full animal because if the jukum cross here they kill them if you are benway cross there they kill you when we were crossing all the checkpoints were desolate we, we saw dead bodies on the ground but we know we don't die no we won't die unless we lay our lives down god has spoken he said because i live you shall live also i don't need prayer to be safe anymore ask them who travel with me i sleep every time i start traveling that's one of the ways i rest they pray they play there can be turbulence nothing happens i was in ghana going to preach i landed that evening we we're on the way to the the the, the venue and a car a truck hit our car from the side the car started spinning on the road went and hit the 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 middle separation the pavement there pope and crossed it and was stuck there they were shouting ah, there was no 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 leap of hey no it is well come down open the door come down because I live, you shall live also. Now, that is a place where it's a, it's a reflex action. It is not you composing yourself. Car is spinning. People are shouting, stop. Why car is still spinning? Reno Kusi got up. That's my pastor in Ghana. He says, sir, this thing I've seen today, I believe in you. It's not when he stopped. Car was spinning. Hey, hey. Calm down. It's well. As he hit the stuff and stop, relax. Open the door. We are fine. And we came down, entered another car, went to the meeting, and manifested the power of God. When God told me, "Because I live, you shall live also," He stopped. He has He has removed that type of prayer from my syllabus. You, you can't die. You, you are kept. I have is is God's faithfulness and credibility that is my own safety now because I've heard it. There's no way I can preach it. Another person will enter until he catches it by revelation. These are the things we we are like archaeologists. We are excavators. When we are praying and pressing in the spirit, it's wars we are looking for. Because we know that our seasons are tied to wars. Our manifestations are tied to wars. That's why I tell people it's not about age. It's not about gender. It's not about race. It's not about where you came from. What wars have you caught? If you catch it, if you catch it, oh dear Lord, it can change everything. When you see men who are like Mount Zion that cannot be moved, it's because they are built on the rock. That's why the Bible is speaking. He said, don't build your hands, house upon the quicksand. He said, let your house be built upon the rock. He said, when the wind comes and hits upon it boisterously, he said, that house will stand. Words. Words. The second purpose of prayer is to help you catch words. The proceeding word of God. See, words are moving in the spirit. Television networks are passing here now. Internet network is passing here. But you need the equipping to trap it. If you trap it, you can watch a video. What I'm sharing now, somebody is watching it in Australia. That means what I'm saying here is traveling as far as Australia. This thing I'm talking here is traveling as far as Australia. But you will need an antenna and a device to trap it. When you start praying, you are awakening the device that traps walls wars that come from heaven and when you catch heavenly wars you will live heavenly life hmm. Abba. Oh, yeah. Hi. 
I want to stop here. They, my spirit now is charging. My spirit is charging. My spirit is charging. We were created to walk in the stature of the immortals. But we need utterances that come from the realms of the immortals to function like the immortals. That's the code. And it is prayer that positions you, positions you to catch those words. The second purpose of prayer is to catch words. A man's weakness and defeat is tied to the scarcity of utterances coming in his quarters. The third purpose of prayer is for transformation and transfiguration. Our greatest limitation as men is not the devil. Our greatest limitation as men is not the environment we live in. Yes, these things can pose some level of impedance and impediment. But our greatest limitation is the operation of the flesh. You see, for the flesh wrestles against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and the two is one against the other. That is an ancient war. The job of the flesh is to, def is to defy the potentials and the possibility of the spirit. And so the reason the spirit can be full of potential, even in the equivalence of the Christ, yet not manifest, is because the flesh were encumbered. It's the job of flesh to diffuse the potential of spirits, or of the spirit. And so when we begin to pray, one thing prayer is engineered to achieve is to decimate the flesh is to steal the flesh this is why when a man begins to pray he will notice that the flesh will begin to wrestle him distractions begin to come time suddenly becomes elongated five minutes is like two hours the reason is that prayer attacks the power of flesh and so that reaction is just like setting fire in the hole where there's a snake the, the snake will jump out and try to that's what flesh is doing. The flesh was masquerading, hiding and, 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 and oppressing your possibilities. Now that prayer has come, prayer has a way of revealing everywhere flesh has strength. And so when a man begins to pray, he's launching an assault on the flesh. And if he understands the technology going on and it doesn't stop, after a while, flesh will give way. And so when flesh gives way, what happens is that transformation and transfiguration takes place because transformation you know the flesh is not your body it's the human nature the fallen nature and the fallen nature is weaved into the soul of a man are we together so when you begin to pray what happens is that transformation light begins to come to you to renew you some of the scriptures you read that didn't make much sense to you as you start praying God will take one word or one verse and it begins to open it. So the light component of that scripture is now shared on you. It's that light now that will renew the mind. Many think it's just by reading Bible that the mind is renewed. When you read Bible, you store the word in your soul. It's when you meditate or you pray that the scriptures open. Meditation is to talk what you have read to yourself. You keep talking it. As you are talking it, what is happening is that you are trying to align with frequency. Frequency simulations are taking place until resonance happens. It's just the way Joshua was walking around Jericho until on the seventh day, alignment was achieved and they blasted and the wall sank. So when you are meditating and you are talking scriptures to yourself because the word is Hagar, you are trying to align frequencies. When resonance takes place, that word the frequency of that word becomes the frequency with which the Holy Ghost spoke it. Then light breaks into your soul. Or when you are in the place of prayer, the Holy Ghost himself will come. That's why he said the Holy Ghost helped our infirmities. Romans 8.26 For we know not what to pray for as we ought to. How, how be it the Spirit helped. And what it shows there is that the Spirit begins to reveal to us. Because that kind of help is to bring you access to light, to truth in their authentic state. But if you don't pray, you will have logos in your head that will not translate to anything. Do you know that when you overstock fire with wood, the fire will quench? There must be a balance between wood and fire in order to produce heat to cook. So while you are reading, you must also engage prayer. And so when you begin to engage prayer, prayer has the potential of transformation and transfiguration. In Matthew 17 verse 2 and 3, it says, even Jesus as he prayed, he said the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment 
began to glister. This is what Paul was teaching in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 1 and 2. He said, we have a tabernacle that is a heaven. Our glory is like a vest, a garment. He says it's a heaven. He said, but the way we put it on is to travel. When we start praying, when we start praying, when we start praying, he says something happens to us. That tabernacle begins to clothe us. And when that tabernacle clothes you, it kills the potentials of flesh. And so when you find people who don't pray, they can even use the word of God to defraud. They can use the word of God to swindle people. But when you pray, you engage the spirit that brought that word. And when you engage that spirit, the energy that comes from the realm of that spirit will alter you, even your molecular structure. In Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1, he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He had words. He was speaking words. But for the first time, he encountered the spirit that originated that word. And immediately, nobody spoke to him. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Woe unto me! And the Bible said, one of the angels that when, was moving took of the coals that was in the midst of the fire and touched his tongue and said, your iniquity has passed. When men don't pray, there will be wolves in sheep clothing. Using the word of God to steal, to cheat and to manipulate people. They will burn scripture in order to satisfy their ambition and appetite. This is why we have criminals today standing on the altar, wearing ties, no integrity, liars, stealing from innocent and gullible people. You are calling for partnership, but there's no kingdom assignment that you are doing. Visibly, what is the money for? It's for rich watches, iPhones and cars. It's for holidays in nations, Bahamas. And the kingdom suffers because there's no prayer when a man begins to die prayer will stop the first sign that a man's spirit is under attack is that he won't pray anymore and the first sign that a man's spirit is healthy is that prayer will begin because one of the things that your spirit loves to do naturally is to pray you may not have backslidden to the point of sinning if you are not praying now you're under attack that's what i'm saying because if you are healthy you will want to talk to God. You will not. You will want to participate there. The word will be bubbling out of your spirit. You want to know how witnesses become lecturers, having no power, having nothing to show to their generation. It's when the altar of prayer dies. They are full of language, but nothing to show. The words can't convict, and the words don't carry the weight of glory to do what the glory was designed to do. And so when men pray. The second thing that happens to them is that transformation will begin to take place. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.